Hello, good morning to you and um, welcome to St. Mary's um, in Chalcombe. That's where um, I am at the moment, just um, spending some time in the quiet. I've spent some time um, preparing for this service in the, in the lovely garden here with the beautiful sunshine um, and just really enjoyed the, um, the quiet that this place brings. Um, and then I've come in um, today so you can all be in this place, just this beautiful building. I just, of all, I just love it here because of all the people that could have been in this place. Um, and now we are here today. And I just think that that's amazing. I love the fact that lots and lots of people over the centuries have been here. Um, and now we are here putting our footprints on this lovely floor as well. So um, as you can see, I've already lit, an, um, I've already lit, sorry, not lit, an, the Easter candle um, behind me. Um, and I apologise that I've already lit it before, but um, I'm actually too short <laughs> to... Um, to reach it so I had to stand on the on the chair to to be able to reach it to be able to light it so that's why it's already lit I'm afraid um, but there we have it our Easter candle at this special season already lit in this building where many people have stood before us so what a special place this is so hallelujah Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So I'm going to be leading our service today um, from, from our service sheets. So if you happen to have one at home, um, then you are welcome to follow along with it. Um, but if not, then it doesn't matter. You can just listen to the words and um and that will be okay as well. So um, it doesn't matter if you haven't got a service sheet. So it's, a, it's always good to um, prepare ourselves for a service of the word. So um, let's just say some prayers of preparation and confession to start with. So if you have a order of service, then we'll say this first part together. But if not, then that's fine. You can just listen to me and, um, and that will be okay. So almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the lights went out then. But I think it's fine without them. So let's have a time of confession together. Christ is risen. To bring new life to our world. With a love stronger than death. Yet we often live with our hearts entombed in fear. All that we do to prevent God's goodness flowing into our lives and the life of the world we call sin. And we confess it now. So we say together, if you have an order of service. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. 
Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your commands. That all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have our gospel reading now. And our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of John, from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 22 to 30. So you can follow this um, if you have your Bible with you. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were gathered round him were saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not listen. The works I do in my father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I just think that that's a brilliant, brilliant reading. I'm sorry, I'm just picking up my notes off the floor. This is what happens when you are filming. So I just love that reading. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really probably one of my favourites. So have you ever been in a situation where you see something but you aren't quite sure that you have seen something. You're not quite sure whether what you've seen was, was real. Did I just see that or not? Or you might decide, in fact, that you don't want to see it. It never happened. That's what you could say to yourselves. I remember when my girls were toddlers we used to play hide and seek in the house quite a lot. They would cover their eyes when they were hiding because if they couldn't see me, then I couldn't see them. Obviously, I would play the game and I would go around searching for them, calling their names around the house, looking under things, looking under the bed, looking under the sofa and looking over things, and then I would be able to listen to them giggling away. And then shock, I would find them. And then they would say to me, oh, sorry, I would say to them, where were you? I couldn't find you. Only for them to say, I was just here, mummy. How many of us have played that game with um, with our children or with other people's children. I, I, I imagine most of us have. But there's also the times when we see something and um, maybe there might be some injustice somewhere, but rather than get ourselves involved in it, that might make us feel uncomfortable or might make, up, make um, take up time in our busy day, we just walk on past or we look the other way. We pretend that we didn't see something or we choose not to see it. 
And sometimes we just don't see what's right in front of our faces. I don't know about you, but um, I really love the question in our reading today. I love the fact that the Jews were gathered around Jesus and that they say to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Can you imagine being in that place at that time? I quite often like to put myself in other people's shoes and imagine what they must be thinking when somebody has said something to them. And when I read this, I like to put myself in Jesus's shoes. I wonder what Jesus thought when they said this to the him. Maybe we can imagine Jesus to let out a big sigh, a mutter under his breath. What more do I have to do to convince these people? You can kind of imagine it. You can imagine him probably being a bit frustrated with that. And in fact, Jesus does answer. And he says, I did tell you, but you didn't believe. I did tell you, he says. Throughout the whole of John's gospel, John is telling us who Jesus is right from the very beginning. In the first chapter, Jesus is introduced as God, Lamb of God, Son of the God Messiah, King of Israel, Son of Man. But obviously, that's not enough to convince people. In chapter 2, he performed his first sign by changing water into wine. But obviously, that wasn't enough. In chapter 3, we read that he is the unique son of God. But that's obviously not enough either. In chapter 4, he is the living water and the saviour of the world. In chapter 5, Jesus heals a man who has been lame for 38 years. Jesus calls God, my father, making him equal to God. In chapter 6, Jesus says that he is a true source of life, being the bread of life. In chapter 7, Jesus promises the spirit of God to those who are thirsty. In chapter 8, he invokes the name of God. In chapter 9, he claims to be the light of the world. <sighs> and then here we are now in chapter 10, where Jesus claims that he is the door to salvation, that no one can enter except through him, and also that he is the good shepherd. I mean, I'm not being funny, but what more does this man have to do to convince people? You would think that that's enough and we're only on chapter 10. I wonder how many more signs and experiences the Jews need before they, they would believe him. Jesus tells them, the work I do in my father's name, testify about me. It's all of these things that he has done before, this is what makes him the Messiah. If we look back over those last 10 chapters in John, this surely is a great CV. I think Jesus is a pretty good case for proving who he says he is. What more do we need? Now, I will tell you that I've never been much of a sheep. 
I've never been a crowd follower. And I know that you will find it hard to believe, but I've never been a person who will just take things as I see them. I've always got a question. As a child, I was never satisfied with just because. That was never good enough for me. I always needed to know more. I now see this actually in my own children. Part of me is rather proud of that, I will say, but the other part of me, um, when I haven't got much time to answer those questions, is not so, not so proud. For me, if I experience something or if I see it, it's real. If it feels right, I'll do it. But I won't do something just because somebody told me to do it. So how do we do what Jesus is, doing, is saying here? My sheep listen to my voice and they follow me. How do we do that? I don't just hear Jesus when I'm nervous about doing something different I hear him I hear him say I'm right here and that tiny whisper when I'm sad because I can't make my daughter better I hear him Trust me, he says. And the times of total joy when I press submit when handing in yet another late night essay. I hear him. I hear those words. I'm so proud of you. And I don't just see him in the everyday. The miracle of a friend of mine receiving some money as a gift just as she was just about to sell her car to pay her bills. The messages that seem to come through of prayer when you feel that you need it the most. And just recently on placement at the RUH, being with a dying lady who was in distress and pain, but while praying for her and praying with her, watching a wave of peace come over her and her be able to die with dignity. So I don't just hear Jesus. I don't just see Jesus. But I feel Jesus in me. I feel him when I have to make tough choices. When I have to make say that sentence, what would Jesus do? I feel him when I'm listening to a song and it stops me in my tracks and takes my breath away. I feel him when I have to stand at the front of church in my robes. I just know that he is there. So all these experiences that we have with Jesus makes it easier for us to believe him. It makes, us, makes it easier for us to listen to his voice. And it makes it easier for us to tell people about him and follow him. Jesus said, no one, no one shall snatch them out of my hand. Jesus will never let us go. He will never give up on us. He will cry with us. He will laugh with us. He will write essays with us. He will play hide and seek with us. He will hobble with us. He will garden with us. He will dance with us. He will go to the doctors with us. He will be there at that morning cup of tea. And he will hold out his hand to us as we enter into eternity. 
But the question is, can we see it? Will we allow ourselves to believe and completely follow him? Or will we turn a blind eye to what is in front of us? So my question that I leave with you today is how obvious does Jesus really, really need to be? Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a time of prayer now. So I'm going to turn my camera around and point it to our candle. So you can just look at the candle as we're praying. So let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you for being really obvious. We thank you that the signs of you are all around us. We thank you that your light flickers around us and in us and through us like the flame on this candle. We thank you that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the Good Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine this weekend. We thank you for the world that you have created, for the birds that sing in the trees, for the flowers that spring up. Thank you that we can enjoy these things around us. Help us, Lord, to look after this amazing world that you have created for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our benefice that are sick or struggling right now. We pray for Bob, Carolyn, Margaret, Jen and Jock, Peter, Tony, Bill, Sally, Muriel, Lorna and Sue. We pray for Simon and Brian and we pray for Millie. And we also pray for those people who are mourning right now. We pray that they will feel your presence around them. We especially pray for the families of Ruth Keir, of Sarah Newcomb. We pray for Graham Clark's family. We pray for Rose Lucas's family. And we pray for the family of Hilary Buchan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for our Queen Elizabeth. As we are all preparing for the Jubilee, 
We just pray for her, for strength, for her to be able to attend as much as she can. Lord, we thank you for her service, for all that she has done over the last 70 years. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of us at St Mary's and at St Stephen's. We pray for health and happiness. We pray for friendship and, and love. And we pray for the APCM at St Stephen's this afternoon. We pray that the work that we do in our churches is received with love from this community. In your mercy, hear our prayer. So Father, we bring together all of our prayers. And we just thank you for being here in our presence this morning. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me this morning and um, I hope to see you um, really soon and um, have a lovely, lovely rest of your day today. Um, enjoy, enjoy your families, enjoy some lovely food, enjoy some outdoor fresh air um, and most importantly, enjoy God's peace around you. Amen. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.